Great. Well, uh, thank you. I am. Um, I think we're a little. Well, we're right on time. Just about on time. So I'll. I'll get right to it. Um, by the way, if you, I saw a lot of you taking pictures. Feel free to take pictures. But really, if you just want the presentation, just send me your card or give me your card. I'll just email to you. I don't really care. Um, there's nothing classified here. So. Um, Happy to share. So, just a, so a few things. Uh, uh, Bill Koss from Drew Technologies. Uh, we are a few-year-old startup um, located just outside of Boston, uh, with offices in uh, in Hyderabad. So, I have a kind of a split uh, global dev team. So, a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, the core team uh, originally came from a company called Callion Technologies, which was a, an all-optical uh, switching company, and we um, have been thinking about how we kind of deploy all optical switches in the data center. And so we call that a photonic fabric. Uh, there's a number of reasons why we want to kind of go do this. And let me just um, fix my little screen here. Uh, there we go. So when we uh, started building the company, the, the first kind of projects we had, we had some, uh, some capital from a large hyperscaler who had lots of uh, individual single GPU server machines, and and they're, this is like pre-COVID, and they said, hey, can you can you actually go figure out how to optically disaggregate GPUs and then move those GPUs into machines so we could have multi-GPU machines from single GPU machines? Can you build that technology? And uh, when I first went to look at the company, uh, I was not one of the original founders. Um, I went. To, I knew the team, and I had been advising them. And they, I went and saw this technology, and I looked at it, and I thought, I have no idea what you guys are doing. Uh, straight out, I just couldn't figure it out. Like, why would someone want this? Um, and then we started kind of looking at it, and they kind of convinced me to go be CEO. And I joined, and we started working on it. And then I realized that ah, what we really were doing was uh, completely disaggregating the server as you know it today, and then attaching it all to a photonic fabric and then allowing all of those resources to be completely 100% fluid across the fabric architecture. So that's what we were going to go build. And so as we thought about this problem, uh, and when I say photonic fabric, I mean could be a very large fabric. It could be just a, a couple simple switches, or it could be 50, 60, 100 switches, could be 15,000 endpoints, it could be you know, a very large three-dimensional torrid structure. Uh, all optical, all light, no, no packet switching in the middle of it. So this is what we were building. So when we think about it, um, a number of advantages, uh, primarily you know, power, cabling, performance, latency, all those wonderful things you heard are very true. But I think there's one more significant uh, advantage. And when I talk to customers, I've been here, flew in last night, I've been in Europe for a few days doing customer calls. The real advantage is we can move the wires. Straight out, that's the advantage. We can move the wires and we can create a slice of the fabric architecture around a workload, a work group, um, any type of kind of grouping that you want to do in the fabric architecture. So when I mean we can move the wires, and, uh, and I'm a network guy, for 30 years I've been selling packet switches and routers and traditional network architectures. When you wire them up in the data center, you wire the server to a switch, to a spine, to a core, it's done. That's how it works. And yes, you can get very large scale and you can build three tiers and you can do all sorts of cool things, but if you wanted to move the server from rack one to the switch in rack 100, you'd have to send somebody down there and more likely they're not gonna move that. So in our architecture, we build a very large fabric architecture, three-dimensional torus, X, Y, Z architecture, and we can manipulate the actual fabric around the endpoints. And so that's what we've been building. So this uh, provides a much different architecture than what most people look at. Uh, I'm only aware of one company to significantly deploy something close to this. That would be Google. So they have lots of papers. You can go read it. Uh, their TPU4 paper is probably the best one to go read. So in the fabric architecture, we thought, well, if we had a fabric in which that was all light, um, low latency, and you could move the wires, we could then develop this technology we call slicing. So you can basically slice the fabric around workloads, grouping clusters, and that's the real advantage. So I kind of walked through this a little bit already, but when you think about uh, why you'd want to have uh, a dynamic optical fabric, it's really around moving the wires, your data rate agnostic, your frame format agnostic. In our case, we can actually run, the first thing we did was PCIe. So PCIe over the optical fabric, but we can also do CXL. We can do RDMA, which we're gonna announce uh, very shortly. And so now all of a sudden you have a very extensible fabric architecture where you can run Gen 3 PCIe, you can run Gen 5, you can run RDMA, you can run various things in the same uh, kind of fabric architecture. It becomes very, very useful. So we can put it all under software control, 
Certainly all optical switches, you know, much significant power compared to a, an electrical packet switch. And the beauty is it's a little bit different than a traditional network architecture. In our case, um, we can take the workload requirements and imprint it into the fabric. Rather than the fabric kind of working around the workload, we, we basically take the workload and we can create the fabric architecture that you want. And the reason, I'm going to try to stay on time here. The reason why you do this, uh, and the reason why I think we need kind of you know, a dynamic fabric you know, networking architecture, is the workloads are just huge, right? So, so this is, you know, I took this off the web, but you know, pretty much you can, you can all go find it, right? The source is there. So you find um, you know, workloads are growing, LLMs are growing, you know, huge amount of things. People are building at very, very large scale. So we think that really what you want to do is how you manipulate that infrastructure much better. You'd have much, much higher level of efficiency of resource utilization if we can actually uh, create and group the, the resources needed for the compute, for the, the LLMs, essentially, you know, together as a single group. Think of our, our architecture. Um, I was in California last week. I presented to one group, and uh, a longtime storage person said, you built a SAN for all the compute elements essentially a private network that's completely unshared, that's a direct connect fabric architecture. That's essentially what we've, we've kind of gone and built. So as a company, uh, we've been working at this for a while. We're, as I said, uh, almost five years old. Uh, you know, the first thing we did was figure out how to disaggregate the, uh, the server bus and essentially attach it to an optical fabric. So um, just as the prior speaker said we did a lot of things in how do you move all the sideband signals over an optical fabric that's very hard you're going to move that um, so we have a lot of FPGA work uh, we've then gone on and decided how do we go essentially do that with RDMA uh, we have uh, new actual hardware cards coming out which haven't announced them yet which which actually integrate a number of co-package optics silicon photonics chips because um, I think an earlier speaker said you know it's a very hard problem when you're putting a small form factor card into a PCIe server architecture, you need a lot of bandwidth to come out of that, especially if you want to do full 16 lanes of, of, of Gen 5, 32 gig certies. You got you know, 512 gig coming out of a small form factor card. I got some news for you, pluggables don't work. Um, you're out of physical board space to fit into these things, so you had to move to a much more interesting kind of optical technology, which uh, we haven't announced it yet, but we will show it at Supercompute uh, this year. And we had to build basically a work, what we call like a workload aware typology, right? So um, a lot of software stack uh, integration in our work. So in, in terms of thinking about how we're gonna use photonics, use photonic switching, uh, certainly we needed to get better uh, integration of you know, port density. So we see uh, co-package optics or near package optics, however you wanna kinda frame it as, as super important to us. But we also had to go do the integrations at the, the workload. So uh, higher level software systems can actually understand all the endpoints around the fabric architecture and can actually imprint the actual network typology that they want. And when you, when you compose a node and you compose a cluster, which we call slice, um, if it's, if it's under-resourced, you can dynamically add GPUs to it, you can dynamically add, add NVMe, FPGA, smart NICs, DPUs, whatever, whatever you're using in your architecture. And so this was, you know, putting this all together is a true system architecture and how to work. So when I go out and talk to people, it's not, it's not just, you know, people trying to solve kind of specific problems. I'm really talking about people who have, you know, certainly AI, HPC, I kind of think that's a merged market today, but also uh, lots of video, rendering, you know, those markets are, are super interesting to us. And so today we think about, you know, where this is all going. Um, you know, certainly PCIe is dominant in the marketplace, which is why we focused on that. Um, I mean, it's, it's huge, right? So uh, when we first announced our product, we had a Gen 3 product. The market was just transitioning to Gen 4. Gen 4 exploded with, with uh, A100s. And then, you know, within a year, hoppers are out. I saw last night that uh, NVIDIA delivered the first Blackwell to, to uh, OpenAI. Open so you just see an explosion of speed and, and density in the fabric architecture. So how do we put all this stuff over the fabric is really, you know, what we've been focused on. So. Um, we're going to do RDMA over photonics very shortly. Uh, it's a mid-year delivery for us. And essentially, this allows you to kind of virtualize existing kind of NIC architecture uh, over the photonic fabric. So we can use off-the-shelf servers, anything with a kind of a, an RDMA NIC architecture. And there's some reasons to go do this. It's, it's not quite as high a scale as a full hardware disaggregation, but uh, it allows you to kind of move very quickly 
uh, and merge different types of traffic technology over photonic fabric. And so these are the things that we're kind of focused on. I'm just going to try to stay on time here a little bit. So really what we think about, um, I should have probably changed the title a little bit here on this slide, but when we look at building large scale ethernet networks, even InfiniBand networks or PCIe switch networks, we think that you just run into a huge power problem. You run into a huge performance problem. You run into a, a deterministic problem where you can't actually craft the fabric architecture around the workloads well enough. And so my, a lot of my colleagues in the prior world, you know, networking people, they're trying to solve this with spray and pray and 800 gig ports and more silicon and stack more switch silicon on top of switch silicon. Um, absolutely think this is a, you know, not gonna work, right? The, the moment you're out of switch ports or you need more bandwidth in your ports, you get to go buy a new switch, buy a new chip in the switch, this is a problem. Uh, so really when, when we think about our fabric architecture, what we're really building is, is quite a large fabric, right? So uh, you, you, can, you don't have to build this day one, you can just build a couple switches. But if you think about this architecture, it's rate and uh, format agnostic. You can run 100 gig, 200 gig, 400 gig, 800 gig, perfectly in the same fabric, it'll scale. You don't have to upgrade the fabric architecture. You can put different frame formats over it. And when you disaggregate the server, this has a huge change to the TCO, to the change to the operating model. You know, I have customers who've told me, oh, I bought uh, 10 racks over here and I didn't put enough memory in the servers, so I bought another 10 racks and I have enough memory, but then I got the GPU wrong, so I bought another 10 racks. So now I have 10 racks with the wrong memory, 10 max, 10 racks with the wrong GPU, but then I finally got it right, so now I'm really running 30 racks. But you know, it, it's a mix. It's you know, only certain rock racks have the workloads I need. Um, you would kind of really never do this in a kind of a disaggregated photonic architecture. What you would do is the server would be disaggregated, and you can compose the hardware resources around the CPU as needed. And, and if you needed to upgrade the GPUs, which are on a much faster upgrade cycle than CPUs, I mean, let's face it, people are running CPUs, you know, six to 10 years on a server. I mean, 10 years ago, the people would say, oh, I upgrade my servers every 2.9 years, but you know, nobody does that anymore. They run six years plus through the architecture, but they want to upgrade the GPUs much faster. I mean, just go look at the NVIDIA announcements. I mean, you just need to scroll through their press release. It's every 18 months they have, or every 12 months they have a new GPU that's available, right? So people want to jump to the new GPU, well, if you have to consume the entire thing in a new server every time, I mean, this is a problem, right? I mean, you're, I mean, unless you've got lots of money, this is a real problem. So in an architecture when you can disaggregate that and you can separate the resources, and this is what we believe, separate the GPUs into pools, separate uh, storage into pools, uh, any other specialized processors if you're using FPGAs or you know, whatever it may be, if you can separate those things into pools and then it gives you the ability to upgrade those pools or portions of those pools completely separately uh, from the actual kind of consumption model today, which is a 1U, 2U, 4U, 8U sheet metal box, right? And so uh, to do all this though, and I'll also say my colleagues in the optical world are, are amazing because there's a stack of companies out there that are doing incredible things about putting higher density, you know, internal lasers, higher density, more wavelengths, different types of wavelengths, and all sorts of interesting, cool optical things. Um, and we just, we view that as kind of like an innovation pool that we're just gonna grab and put into our system architecture. So um, more wavelengths on a fiber, super interesting to us, higher density, switching, all those capabilities in the fabric architecture. So all of this allows us to essentially build a very deterministic, meaning like, we directly wire resources together. We don't go through any intermediate switches. There's absolutely no state in our fabric. It's a direct wiring concept. So we understand the endpoints and we wire things together. That's it. They don't have to go figure out how many hops they have to go through uh, as BGP or peering or there's nothing like that. We don't have to do any of that stuff. It's a direct connect fabric architecture. And this completely changes how you kind of build your data center. And it gives you a much more interesting long-term TCO that will be much more efficient in your data center. And we're not the first company to do this, in fairness. Um, the Google guys did that, and actually, that's actually where my team came from. So this is the pictures out of the, one of the more recent uh, Google uh, presentations. Um, I mean, you can just go search it. They've got tons of papers now. You know, this was all like super secret five years ago, but now they've kind of gone and fully published the whole thing. It's well known. Um, now, they started at the network layer. We're not really doing the network layer. We're disaggregating the kind of the compute layer, the server layer. Uh, but they started up there because that was easiest for them. They have other uh, capabilities that they can go build. But, but what they show is you can build a, 
what's called a, you know, a three-dimensional torus. So think of it as a cube. It's the same architecture that we have. Um, and then you can kind of attach things to the cube. You can take portions of the cube out of service, upgrade them, put them back into service. And, and some of the things that we've pioneered in the, uh, the fabric architecture is a concept we call uh, attach-detach. So we've gone and made uh, modifications to the Linux kernel in the server. Um, so you, you load our software and it allows us to essentially transparently connect a PCIe bus to an optical fabric. So when you add resources or you take resources away, like you add GPUs, the server doesn't, you know, the Swift server doesn't reboot. It doesn't have to reset. It's a dynamic nature to it. And that is a, a you know, gives you a fluidity of resources across uh, the fabric architecture. Um, so we kind of dynamically renumerate the, the bus architecture uh, while the system is running. And so, but you know, this is a proven architecture. I mean, Google's got you know thousands of servers, I mean, thousands of switches deployed at this time. I mean, this isn't like you know, it's in all their major data centers. They talk about how it runs, and they have papers on reliability and all this stuff. I mean, it's it's super well proven at this point. And so, really, uh, kind of our focus is how we kind of evolve from dynamic, you know, basically dynamic static networks. Well, we we are evolving to a dynamic network from static networks, and that's people are still trying to figure out how to put you know how to make dynamic networks or static networks work better. And really, we just think of it as a fabric made up of lots of optical switched ports with optics on the edge and all the compute elements. And then what we can do is we can basically call the fabric. And so that's what that kind of shows on the, the right-hand side, meaning you can, you can call the whole fabric as a single entity, or you can start to call slices of it. You could say, I want a 2 by 4 by 8. I want a 4 by 2 by for I want a full 16 by 16 by 16. So this is a, a 4096 cube. So 4096 GPUs in a, in a cube. Uh, we'll have this at the end of the year. You can actually build four availability zones of this. So you can put 16,000 in a large cluster architecture. I'm not saying that people are going to go off and do that today. But what you can do is you can start with a just a slice of this cube and then build onto the slice. You just continue to build and build. Uh, you'll fully use the architecture. Um, It'll have a very long life. You'll put all sorts of different things on it. It'll be very, very super cool for you. All your friends will, you know, think you're just like the coolest person. Show it right up. Um, and, and really, the reason why we want to go do this, uh, this is actually from a Meta paper. Actually, it's from an MIT paper, which was done some work with Meta. Um, but, you know, wor workloads are actually different. Not LLMs are the same. Not all workloads need the same type of resources. And so what we can do is, from the software architecture, we can actually harness what's best for the fabric and then we can, or, or for the workload, and we can imprint that on the fabric. And that's a very, very different network architecture. That's how we call slice. So we say, oh, this workload requires blank, and we're actually going to create that in the fabric, and there you go. So I'm going to get us right on time and finish this thing right off, I think, perfectly here. So uh, just you know, a little bit about kind of, you know, we're supposed to put this in the presentation. I will say that, uh, you know, there's a huge power problem, and you know, the only way you're going to kind of get over the power problem is really through increased amounts of optics. And the problem with optics, though, is it's all light, which is very, very cool, but you can't really read it, you can't buffer it, you can't store it. Uh, there's all sorts of problems in actually switching light. And so we, as soon as we move, we remove OEOs and just go to straight all optical connections is where the real uh, power performance benefit goes. So um, that's a wrap on time. All right. Perfect. <coughs>